All right, so welcome to this project. And we are going to spin up a Kubernetes cluster using Vagrant. So just to give you a brief overview, a Kubernetes cluster contains a master node as well as more than one worker nodes. So let us refer to this diagram. I've attached this in the resources section and you can access it as well. So first node is called the master node or the control plane. The control plane has the capabilities to manage the complete cluster. It will have etcd, which is kind of a database. Then it will have some services like scheduler, which basically schedules the pods, controller manager, which will control the complete cluster. Then you have the cube API server, which would act as a way to access all these services by a simple API. Then you have the nodes here, where your pods would run. So keep in mind, in Kubernetes, the workload would generally run on the worker nodes. To manage the state of this node, it will have some sort of agent, which is usually kubelet. Now I've also provided a link to the blog post where I've explained these services as well as the steps to install Kubernetes. I will just give you a walkthrough on how to install Kubernetes. So this tutorial is for Kubernetes cluster in Ubuntu 22.04. So first and foremost, I have given the configuration that I would be using. There would be three nodes. However, for my Vagrant tutorial, I would be just spinning two nodes, the master node and the worker node. I'm going to use a loop where you can define the number of nodes for worker. It can have minimum of one worker node and depending upon your compute or capacity, you can spin up more worker nodes as well. Now I'm using the IP address, which is native to virtual box that is 192.168.56.100 and the worker node IP would be incrementing by one starting from 101. First and foremost, I will define this into etc host file so that I'm able to access the nodes using this host name or this host name. Uh, we have to disable swap. This is a requirement of Kubernetes. We have to load these kernel modules, that is overlay and BR net filter. Then we have to enable these kernel parameters, which is IPv4 forwarding, IP tables, and IP6 tables. The next step would be to install the container runtime engine, that is containerd.io, and we are going to use Docker as well. We are also going to install Docker Compose, which would help if you are working with Docker Compose in your Kubernetes cluster. So we are going to use systemd cgroup in your containerd config, and then we are going to enable and restart the containerd service. Then we are going to define the Kubernetes 1.27 repository. We are going to add it, and then we are going to pull the Kubernetes images. Once this is done, our configuration of the master node and the worker node splits. In the master node, we are going to perform a cube ADM in it. I'm going to use flannel and that's why I'm going to use flannel for my pod networking. And that's why I will use this CIDR 10.2440.0. And then you can specify the control pin endpoint, for example, master.example.com, which points to my master node. And then I'm going to configure my Vagrant user to allow to use the cube ADM service by copying the admin.conf into cube.config. After this, I would be able to access the cube API. The next and the last step in the master node is to configure flannel and reload it. Once this is done, I'm going to copy the cube ADM join command and run it on the worker node. So this is a detailed step and let us try to define this into Vagrant. So I'm in my directory. I will create a new folder. I will perform a Vagrant init. It has created a Vagrant file here, which I would use as a template and define my configuration. And then I will start defining some of the variables. First and foremost, I will define the base box image and set it to Ubuntu Jammy64. So this would be the variable. And now 
I can define my other variable. So like CPUs in master, I will use two. Memory in master, I will use 2048. CPUs in worker, I would use one. And memory in worker, I would use 1024. And then I will define the worker node count as one. So you can change the worker node count here. So I've defined these variables, base box image, CPU master, CPU worker, memory master, and memory worker. You can change them as per your requirement. Now let us come to the configuration of the boxes. First and foremost, I will define a common script which has to be applied on both the boxes shell and I'm going to use a shell script and the path would be common.sh so this means I will create a common.sh file so in this common.sh file I will follow all the steps to which are common to both worker and the master node once this is done I will define the master node here so for the master node I will define the VM so I will so I will use the configuration master hostname is master VM network private VM provider virtual box and this is the configuration VB name master CPU master memory master I will also add a public network now let us define the another machine which is the worker node So I will just copy this and paste it here. I will just put it into loop one dot dot worker node count dot each do and I will specify I here, cut this configuration, paste it here and then I need to just change everything to worker. I will update this hostname here as master.example.com and worker i.example.com now this is the configuration that I'm going to use I have to just change this IP address here so I will just use this variable so my IP address would be either for worker 1 it would be 101 for worker 2 it would be 102 and so on and this I need to update to match the variables that I've been def that I've defined for worker nodes so it should be worker and it should be worker here. So this is my configuration for the worker node. And as this is in the loop, I have to just do an extra end here. So I've just reduced the font size and removed the terminal so that I can show you the complete picture here. So, so far we have defined the master node and the worker node block. And inside the worker node, we are using a loop to define multiple worker nodes. We have programmatically defined the worker node name, the host name and IP address in a sequential way. And then we have used these variables to define the number of CPUs for the worker and the master. However, we have only used a common script here. So we need to define a different script for each master and the worker so at this code block I will just type so in this block I have just used master.sh and inside this loop here I will just define worker.sh so this def completes our vagrant configuration now let us start defining the shell script I will create two more shell script master.sh and worker.sh so I have linked the Git repository which contains these shell scripts, the common.sh which contains all the steps related to both the master and as well as the worker nodes, then the specific script for master.sh and the worker.sh script. I'm going to now perform a vagrant up and walk you through the steps. So if I check the vagrant status, you should see that I have the master and the worker one which are not created and I'm using VirtualBox as I provider. 
I could just do background up, which would spin up both master and the worker nodes. Now, as it will take some time to provision these, I will just fast forward and briefly talk about stuff. So first and foremost, it is provisioning the master server. And as you can see, I have the master node, which has two GB of memory and two processors. All right, it had applied the kernel configuration. It's just performing these apt-get update and then it will install the required packages that is container d and docker so now it's going to install docker and container d this configuration is for docker to use c group driver as systemd now it is installing kubernetes adding the repository and then installing kubernetes so it will install kubeadm kube control kubelet kubernetes cni and socat all right, and the last one is it will install the master script. So this is now the master.sh, which specifically specifies to pull the kubeadm config images and then start the Kubernetes cluster. So right now it's pulling the images. All right, it is starting the cluster now and should be able to create a join command, which we are going to use for our worker nodes. So we should have a join worker.sh which would be used by the worker node to join the cluster. All right, so this ping command I had specified to check the connectivity between the virtual machines. Uh, it's now starting to run some pre-flight checks to join the cluster. Found a bug here. So if I go to my master node, So inside my master node, if I check the IP address, uh, my ENP0S8 has this IP address 56.100, which I have defined. And if I try to ping my worker one IP address using interface, it takes some time for this network interface to come up. And until unless this interface is not up, your cluster would not initialize. So this is kind of a bug that I found uh, while configuring the cluster. Keep in mind I'm using virtualbox 7.0. Possibly this uh, bug might not be in the previous or the newer version. So keep in mind if you're facing issue and if your uh, cluster is stuck, try to ping your worker node IP from your interface. As you can see, the cluster is up. So I can just check the nodes. And you can see the master and the worker one are here. This is the IP address 56.100, 56.101. And then this is the container runtime. The pods are not up because it's still configuring them. So it should be up soon. But as of now, my master and the worker nodes are connected to the cluster. So in this way, you can configure a Kubernetes cluster using Vagrant. Go ahead and try it out. And in case you face any issues, just let me know in the comments box or the question and answer box. And I would be happy to help you. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next lecture.